For today's lesson, we will be discussing about the general equation of conic sections. So we will discuss what is the general equation of the conic section, what are the properties, and some of the important characteristics of different types of conic sections. But first, let's recall what are the types of conic sections. So as what we know, we have circle, we have parabola, we also have ellipse, and hyperbola. So each of these four conic sections has their own standard form of equation. So that is what we discussed before. Now, what we will have is the general equation of these conic sections. Okay, so the general equation of conic sections is given by ax squared plus by squared plus cx plus ty plus e equals zero. So again, this is the general equation of our conic sections where a and b should not be zero at the same time because what will happen if a and b are zero both at the same time so the terms with x squared and y squared will not exist so that will just leave us with a linear equation so our general equation for the conic section follows this particular equation given the general equation how will you know if it's circle parabola hyperbola or ellipse so you just have to look at the values of a and b. So if a is equal to b, then the conic section is a circle. For example, we have x squared plus y squared equals 1. By the way, a and b are the coefficients of our x squared and y squared respectively. So you just have to look at those values. So if a is equal to b, then it is a circle. For example, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So a is 1 here b is also 1. So they are equal. Again, if a and b are equal, then it is circle. If it happens that a times b is equal to 0, then the conic section is a parabola. For example, you have x squared plus y equals 1. So in this given equation of parabola, we know that a is for the coefficient, numerical coefficient of x squared. So here, we know that this is 1. So we know that a is 1. For b, we know that a is the numerical coefficient of y squared. But if you will look at this given equation, there is no y squared. Meaning, b is equal to 0. So therefore, if we multiply a and b, the answer will be 0. So that means this particular equation, x squared plus y equals 1, represents a parabola. Okay, again, if a times b is equal to 0, then it is a parabola. Now, if a times b is greater than 0, then the conic section is an ellipse. For example, we have here x squared plus 2y squared equals 3. So, the numerical coefficient of x is 1. So, that means a is equal to 1. The numerical coefficient of y squared is 2, that means that is our b. So if we multiply this, therefore, ab is equal to 2, which is now greater than 0. So if it happens that ab is greater than 0, then we will call it as ellipse. If you will recall, with the standard form of ellipse, we know that there are x squared and y squared, and the operation there is addition. Okay, so that means x and y, x squared and y squared are always positive. So if you multiply, it will be greater to zero. So it will be greater than zero because the numbers greater than zero are positive numbers or positive integers. If it happens now that a, b is less than zero, then the conic section is a hyperbola. So looking at this example, so a here is one. And then b here is negative 2. Now, if you multiply a and b, the answer that we will get is negative 2, which is now less than 0. Okay? So, again, going back to the standard form of the hyperbola, so we both have x squared and y squared there. And the operation involved is subtraction. So that means one of the values must be negative. So that's why when we multiply the coefficients of a and b, 
for hyperbola, we will be getting a negative number. Okay? So, that's how we can identify the conic section depending on the given general form. So, you just have to look at a and b, which are the coefficients of x squared and y squared. Aside from that, there are also ways on how we can identify easily if the given equation is circle, ellipse, parabola, or hyperbola. First, for a circle, it is a circle if both quadratic terms appear and they have equal coefficients. So again, if in the given equation, both quadratic terms appear, so that means you have x squared and y squared, and their coefficients must be equal. This brings us back now to the standard form. So x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So as you can see, we both have x and y that is being squared. So that means for circle, both the x and y squared must be present. And another thing is that they should have equal coefficients. So if x, if the coefficient of x squared is 1, y squared is 1 also. It is a parabola if only one quadratic term appears. Now if we will go back to the standard form, we have there x minus h squared equals positive negative 4c times y minus k. The other one, y minus k squared equals positive negative 4c times x minus h. So as you can see in the standard form, for parabola, only one variable is being squared. So it's either x or y. That's why if we will expand this and make this into its general form, there is only one quadratic term that appears or one variable that is being squared. So if that happens, meaning the equation given to you represents a parabola. So it's either x squared only or y squared only. For ellipse, it is an ellipse if both quadratic terms appear and the coefficients are both positive but unequal. So if we will go back to the equation of ellipse, we have x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And then the other one is just we interchange a squared and b squared. So as you can see here, according to the rule, both quadratic terms appear because x, x is squared, also y is being squared. So you should have x squared and y squared in the general form. And the coefficients must be both positive. Why? Because the operation involved here is addition. Okay? So if you expand this, x squared is positive, y squared is also positive. Okay? So you have to take that in mind. But their coefficients are unequal. Now, why are their coefficients unequal? Because of the denominators. We know they are two different values. So that means uh, the coefficients are positive but unequal. Now for hyperbola, it is a hyperbola if both quadratic terms appear and the coefficients have opposite signs. So recall the standard form for hyperbola. We have x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. So both quadratic terms appear because x and y are both being squared. Next, the coefficients have opposite signs. Okay, as you can see the hyperbola, the operation between our two terms here is subtraction. Meaning, one of the variables between x squared and y squared, one of them must be negative. Okay, because of the operation. So, that's why it depends on the orientation. So, it's either x squared is negative or y squared is negative. So, if that happens that although both quadratic terms appear and then the x squared and y squared have opposite signs, then that means you're dealing with hyperbola. Okay? So, those are just the techniques that you can use in order to easily identify the conic section based on their general equation. We also discussed last time about eccentricity. So, it is a non-negative real number that uniquely characterizes the shape of a conic section. 
So this determines the shape of our conic section. So if the eccentricity is equal to zero, then that means the conic section is circle. If it is between zero to one, it is an ellipse. If the eccentricity is equal to one, it's a parabola. And if the eccentricity is greater than one, then it's called a hyperbola. So we discussed already how to get the eccentricity. So that's it. So it depends on the value that you will get. And that will also help you to determine the kind of conic sections that we are dealing with. Now let's identify what kind of conic section is given based on its equation. Okay, let's have 3y squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. So you have to take note of the conditions that we know. You can, you can either use the a and b. Okay, or you can use the conditions that I presented a while ago. Okay, so first thing that you have to check is, are both quadratic terms present? Meaning, are x squared and y squared both present? Okay, if yes, then it can be a circle, ellipse, or a hyperbola. But if not, which among the four has only one quadratic term present? So it's a parabola. Okay. So just look at this one. As you notice, we only have uh, y squared. We do not have the x squared. So that means this one is a parabola. Now, if you will use the a and b for a parabola, it should be a, b is equal to 0, or a times b is equal to 0, where a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of y squared. Since we don't have x squared here, meaning a is equal to 0, and then b, we know that is 3. So if you multiply these two, 0 and 3, you will just get 0. So that means this one is really a parabola. This general equation right here um, is pertaining to a parabola. Next, we have 2x squared plus 3y squared. Okay, again, you have to check if the quadratic terms are present, meaning do we have x squared or y squared or both. So in this case, we have both. We have x squared and y squared. So we now have a choice. It's either circle, ellipse, or hyperbola. Okay? Now, with that, we have to look now at the coefficients of x squared and y squared. So, the coefficient of x squared is 2. And then, the coefficient of y squared is 3. So, as what you remember with the conditions a while ago, uh, there are times wherein the coefficients are equal. There are times that the coefficients are not the same. And there are times that the coefficients have the same signs. Okay? So, you have to check. Now, looking at this one, both of them are positive. Okay? They are not equal. So, that means this is not a circle. Because for circles, the coefficients must be equal. Okay? So, it's not a circle. So, these are our choices. So it's not a circle because the coefficients are not equal. For the ellipse and hyperbola, for ellipse, the coefficients must have the same signs. For hyperbola, different signs. So as you can see, both of them are positive. That means this conic section is an ellipse. Then if you will try to multiply a and b, so 2 times 3, you will get 6 which is now greater than 0. So again, if AB is greater than 0, that means it is an ellipse. So this particular equation right here, 2x squared plus 3xy minus 1 equals 0, is a general equation of an ellipse. And lastly, let's have this equation, x squared plus 2x minus 4y squared minus 8y minus 15 equals 0. So again, let's check. So both the x and y are present, x squared and y squared. So our choices will be circle, ellipse, hyperbola. Now looking at the coefficients of x squared and y squared, a is equal to 1. b, which is for y squared, is equal to negative 4. Now, since they are not the same, that means it's not a circle. 
Now, you have to look at the signs. So, as what we know, for ellipse, they should have same signs. Hyperbola, they should have different signs. Okay, so that means, since one is positive, other one is negative, this one is a hyperbola. Or if you will multiply the two values, so AB is equal to 1 times negative 4. So you have negative 4, which is less than 0. Okay, so again, this one now is a hyperbola. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the general equation of conic sections and how we're going to identify them by just looking at the values of A and B and also some of the properties. And see you next time!